For clarification, this is a response to Coughlin um, and Peter, better known as Tooltime9901. You two both made videos recently on Kurt Cobain and his legacy, um, in, mostly in reference to the fact that it was the 18th anniversary of his suicide, or as many hardcore Kurt Cobain fans would put it, alleged suicide. Um, that is neither here nor there in this discussion. I basically want to talk about the content within your videos. Yes, it is the 18th anniversary of Kurt Cobain's death. And yes, people give a shit. Yes, people idolize the man. Yes, I understand it is very much economically effective marketing him as such. However, you both don't seem to be musicians. So let me give you my perspective on the situation. It's a good thing. It is very much unfair to declare the man a coward, denigrate his character, and make the man seem worthless, or at least overblown, whilst overlooking his contribution and Nirvana's contribution to music as a whole. You can thank bands like Faith No More for opening the window for weirder acts in the 1990s, but you have Nirvana and Kurt Cobain to thank for allowing a slew of musicians into the mainstream. Yes, undesirables, as Peter put it, came to appreciate the music in mass, but it has also allowed people like myself to find good music. It is through Nirvana that personally I came to appreciate all types of music. Now let me explain. Um, I like music like Outlaw Country, I enjoy heavy metal, I enjoy jazz, I enjoy experimental forms of music. I have come to know of many different types of really good musicians, both um, in local scenes and, you know, obviously through appreciation of international stars. Now, this is because Nirvana and Kurt Cobain, but specifically Nirvana, um, piqued my musical interest. They'd made me think that, oh, well, if this is a good band, then there's got to be more. If this is a good artist, then there's got to be more. I um, came to understand the Seattle sound and the Seattle scene introduced through Nirvana, but mostly through bands like Soundgarden and Alice in Chains. They came from the Seattle sound, as it is like to be marketed. And they came from that time period, but I don't find, in reference to what Peter was saying, that if you like Nirvana, then you must like Alice in Chains, I don't find there to be any musical similarity between those bands at all, really. Um, there are a few, obviously they all play rock music, but Alice in Chains is a metal band, and I don't see them as anything other than that. Um, and to compare Alice in Chains' music to Nirvana is in my opinion, grasping at straws. It is literally you believing what the rock media tells you. But again, it's neither here nor there. To move on. Idolization is often pathetic. This we can agree on. Um, but you cannot overlook the effect Nirvana had on the overall musical zeitgeist any more than you can overlook Led Zeppelin's popularity in the aftermath of kids who idolized them, like Kurt Cobain. Their effect on their respective musical time periods is very similar. Um, Led Zeppelin was often... Um, especially after John Bonham died, they were thought of as just a band that was immortalized because they broke up so suddenly. They were a band that, even today, some people think are overblown, just some fucking 70s cock rock band. And, you know, even people who are music enthusiasts like, like myself, but I don't agree with this opinion, they think of them as simply a louder blues band. And it's true, but they use it as an insult. I disagree with that. I think Led Zeppelin is a good band. They made some damn good songs. They definitely deserve the popularity they had and have. Um, even they are a part of a corporate rock machine that makes a lot of money off of their you know, past exploits. Or If you look to Led Zeppelin, there is often a new musical repackaged, refurbished album of albums you already have, like Mothership that didn't come out too long ago, is exactly the same as their greatest hits. It's the same thing, just a different cover. And it even has the two discs and everything. It hasn't had a DVD, you know. And I, it's just, it's bullshit. It's just to make money. It doesn't change the fact, though, that there are good songs. It doesn't change that at all. And it doesn't change the fact that, yeah, it may be re repackaged. Um, corporations like to use the excuse that they need to introduce them to a new era and all this. But really, they just want to make money. And I understand that. Whatever. They're in the music business. It's what they do. It's their job. You can't really hate them for doing it. But I do, and I know it's a waste of time. I understand that the both of you are older 
more jaded and certainly more cynical than I, but do not lose sight of this. Nirvana was a good band with solid songs, and though they were not and are not the greatest thing ever, nothing is, they have a very important place in modern music history. Besides, it isn't Kurt Cobain you should be despising. It is the corporate machine that makes a massive profit off of his repackaged tunes and Nirvana's rotting corpse. They oversaturate the market with bullshit in order to make a quick buck. And it's sickening. I, I definitely think that your both of your negativ negativity is misplaced. Um, especially Coughlin. I, I feel as though um, you are more angry with the fans and more angry with the propaganda than angry or disgusted or despising of or whatever the fuck it is of Kurt Cobain himself. Um, I mean, when you throw insults out like coward, it seems to me that you are simply coming from a position of, whoa, well, well, everyone else likes it, I'm sick of seeing it, so I have to insult it. I'm a bit more practical. I don't think that my opinion is more, um, I don't know, more deserving or of respect than yours is. I just feel that both of you are coming from a consumerist point of view, and I don't mean that as an insult. Um, I have the same, I have very similar opinions about Miley Cyrus and Taylor Swift because I am bombarded with ads if I ever go into a music store of a top 40 artist all the time and yeah, I'm sick of it. I think it's bullshit. I don't like things being shoved down my throat like that. I don't like, you know, seeing people go, you know, saying, I love country music, but you know, they have a fucking Taylor Swift t-shirt on and listen to that one album all the time. You know, yeah, I think it's stupid. And, but it doesn't, it doesn't make me talk shit about her. I don't like her music personally, but when you miss, and in my opinion, misplace those feelings on someone like Kurt Cobain, who did care about his music and who was very passionate about the things he thought and the things he wrote and the things he performed to the point of making him sick, you know, yeah, I mean, I can understand because I have a similar passion. I can understand becoming depressed with seeing it turned into, uh, or at least being a part of a, a mechanized process, churning out dollars and you know as easily as it churns out songs. And I don't think, I mean, I, I thought I'm, I don't think that Nirvana was so enamored with the punk ethos that everything has to be DIY, uh, because they signed with a major label after all. They signed with Geffen Records, DGC. And they did that because, you know, they wanted a major label contract. They tried Sub Pop. They didn't like the way it was managed. They wanted their music to be heard. They did not think at all that their music would be as huge as it was. Hell, they were even considering getting rid of Smells Like Teen Spirit off of their Nevermind record because they thought it sounded like the Pixies too much. And personally, I do find the Nirvana mythology, as you refer to it, Peter, interesting. I do feel like that is a very unique time in music history. It's post-industrial. It's not quite... It's getting out... They, they were being raised in a very different time, and their music has definitely transitioned into another radically different time. The 80s and 90s were a very unique time in American culture, and I don't personally have a problem with acknowledging that. Yes, I do think that Nirvana's... Um, I, I, how would you say musical awesomeness is a bit overblown. I do think that they are idolized a bit too much, but if that means that if some kid getting bored with Nirvana means they'll move on to Soundgarden, and then from there move on to Green River, and then from there move on to the Melvins, and then from there move on to bands like I Hate God, Tool, hell, moving on to people like Mike Patton, and then moving on to things like Ipecac Recordings, which is exactly pretty much what happened with me, um, I, I don't have a problem with that. If it means that you're going to find good music, and if it means that you're going to become a musical a music enthusiast and enjoy the tunes, I don't have a problem with that at all. I think that's a good thing. Yes, Kurt Cobain would certainly be rolling in his grave right now if such an act were possible, seeing what his legacy, as many like to put it, has become. But I'm sure even he, as cynical as he was and depressive as he was, could appreciate the fact that because of him, many people have been introduced to really, really good bands and really good music. So, that is my reply to Coughlin and Peter. Um, again, I would just like, as a postscript 
say that I don't mean to be condescending if I come off that way or if I come off as an ass or something. I don't mean to do that. I'm just basically taking part in the discussion. Um, this is Axel Snacks. Peace.